It's been 40 years since Nixon, President Nixon, declared the war against cancer. We haven't made the progress that we need to. And part of that is because we don't understand the biochemistry of a cancer cell very well. I think we get led on the wrong path back in the 1920s when Otto Warburg won a Nobel Prize for showing that cancer cells actually couldn't produce much energy. But the experiment was flawed, as it turns out. There is a group of people uh, who have been studying from Jefferson University that published uh, this information in a, a journal called Cell Cycle on December 1st of 2011 that showed that cancer cells actually have increased energy production. They consume five times the amount of energy that a normal cell does. And their mitochondria are working overtime to do that. And it's the cells around the cancer cells that are depressed, which Otto Warburg apparently got mixed up. So now we have some understanding about what's happening there and we can use that to our advantage to try and change things. And what these researchers have found is a drug called metformin or glucophage prevents cancer cells from using their mitochondria to grow and to metastasize. That's big news because all of a sudden we understand that these cancer cells are stealing ATP from the rest of the body and it probably explains why what happens is the cancer grows while the rest of the body can't make much energy and we get what's called cachexia which means we lose our appetite uh, in an attempt to fight the cancer cells and we lose a lot of weight and we often die from the malnutrition that is, and what comes from that from cancer. So when you have a drug like metformin that can suppress ATP production uh, in a cancer cell you've got something that might be important to look into for treatment. And of course there's work being done on that now. But there's also information about a drug called methyl jasminate. It's even more exciting to me. And that drug has been around for a while. It's a plant stress hormone uh, that's used to treat all kinds of cancers and leukemias in the complementary and alternative medical field. And what it does is it specifically inhibits the mitochondria of a cancer cell but not a normal cell. It causes the cancer cell uh, mitochondrial membrane to swell and to disintegrate. And now these cells that consume five times as much energy as normal cells are in trouble and they tend to die. There's a whole section on uh, methyl jasmine in, on drsabuta.com that if you put in the search box will come up and you'll get a video of me explaining more specific, specifically how it works. So when we look at these new breakthroughs that we're finding uh, from uh, Jefferson University. Uh, we need to start appreciating that there are, is a lot about cancer cells that we don't understand, but this is an opportunity to perhaps find a kind of treatment that might be a little bit more effective in treating cancer in a safe way. Fact is, it doesn't cause any damage uh, to the body's metabolism that we know of. You don't lose your hair, you're not sick, you're not losing weight. It's just something that kills the cancer cells. So we need to do some comparative studies. We need to look at the complementary and alternative therapies that are available out there and start to test them against the mainstream chemotherapy treatments that are so toxic and have a devastating effect on quality of life and oftentimes even kill people because they suppress our immunity and they do a lot of things to upset cell metabolism to keep us healthy. So the mitochondria, as it turns out, may be the Achilles heel of cancer cells and I think we, we are off to a new start where we can start looking at some of the treatments that might affect uh, the cancer cells and not have an effect on, on the normal cells, much like methyl jasminate is. I hope the National Institutes of Health will start devoting some funding to looking at methyl jasminate in a more serious way. I've only had the experience of using it in one patient. It seemed to do a lot, but as the disease progressed, the person went back on their uh, chemotherapy treatment stopped the methyl jasmine and turned out to die. So I don't really know from a case of one. But we need to get comparative studies, we need to do the research, and maybe we'll find something that actually works that's not toxic.